Okay, so we have question number six from June 2016 IAL. Two cars A and B move on parallel straight horizontal tracks. Um, initially A and B are both at rest at with A at the point B P and B at the point Q. So you have A over here and B over here. Okay. Um, at time equals t equals zero. Um, at time t equals zero seconds, A starts to move with constant acceleration A meters per second for 3.5 seconds. So again, we have a clue here. It tells us um, it moves with constant acceleration. So we can use Suvat equations for this. Okay, so let's just do that. So for A, um, let's just do the Suvat straight away. So you have Suvat. So we got S, we don't know. For A, we got starts at rest, U is zero. Okay, A, we have to V, um, it reaches a speed of 14 meters per second. So V is 14. A is what we have to find, and the time is 3.5 seconds. Okay, we don't know what S is. We have to find A. So we can use V equals U plus AT. Okay, so we can we know that A is therefore going to be V minus U over T, which is 14 divided by 3.5. Okay, which gives you, um, I think that's 4. 12 plus 2, yeah, 4. So you have 4 meters per second squared. So A is 4 meters per second squared. So A is 4 basically, right? That's part A. Now on to part B. Car B also starts to move at time t equals zero seconds, so they both start at the same time um, from rest. In the same direction as car A, car B moves with a constant acceleration of three meters per second at time equals t seconds. Okay, um, B overtakes A. At this instant, A is moving with constant speed. Okay. So we've got a sketch on the same axis, a speed time graph for the motion of A and the motion of B between 0 and T seconds. Okay, so let's do that. So we have here... Speed against time. Okay. So here you have speed. meters per second against time in seconds. Now, so let's start with um, A. For A it says it starts from rest. They're both at rest, so it starts from rest. Okay, um, 3.5 seconds and it reaches 14 meters per second. Okay, so it starts from rest and let's get rid of the arrow first. It starts from rest. It starts from zero, zero. And after 3.5 seconds, let's say that's there, it reaches 14 meters per second. And then it goes at constant speed until T. Okay, so here we have, let me draw some lines to make it a bit clearer. So here we have that's 14 and that's 3.5 and the gradient of that would be 4. Okay, it's not too scalable anyway. Now, and that's t seconds, so here we have t. Okay. Now, um, yeah. Then it says, for car B, it also starts to move at time equals zero, and it was at rest as it said in the beginning. In the same direction as A, car B moves with constant acceleration of three meters per second, so less is going to be shallower, uh, the grain is going to be shallower. At time T equals T seconds, B overtakes A. At this instant, A is moving with constant speed. All right, so now, let's draw 
the line for B. Now, they overtake each other. B overtakes A at T seconds. That means they've traveled the same distance. Okay, they've traveled the same distance. So, for example, if I made this point here where they intersect, well, these two definitely do not have the same area, do they? Okay, the tri area of this triangle and the area of this trapezium is not the same at all. The area of the trapezium will be more. You can see that very clearly. Okay, they have the, you know, the, the area of the trapezium includes the area of the triangle at plus more. So there's no way I can put the place where they intersect as where they, um, you know, at the time where they overta it overtakes. It must be somewhere before they overtake that the, that, um, sorry, it must be somewhere um, before, okay, T, where those two lines will intersect. Because the area of this triangle and the area of this trapezium have to be the same. Okay, they have to be the same area because they've traveled the same distance. They started from the same point and they're overtaking each other, right? So basically, at the point where they overtake T seconds, this area, the area of this part here must be the same as the area of that part there. Okay, because that's a common area to both of them. All right, so the area of that part there and that part there must be the same. That's where at the point where they overtake. So you don't put the intersection at T. All right, very important point there. Okay, so that's um, part B. That's done for part B. Now part C says find the value of T. That's eight marks. Now, to find the value of T, okay, we need to uh, know, as I, as I said, these two areas are the same. Okay, so let's have a look. What does it say about T? T is... Yeah, okay. So now, what we can say is we have... The area of the trapezium, very good drawing, is equal to the area of this triangle. That's the key for this question. Okay, the area of the trapezium and the triangle are the same. Okay, so now, what do we know about the area of the trapezium? Well, we know that, okay, this length is basically T, and this length is T minus 3.5. And this is 14. Okay. Um, for the triangle, um, this is, again, T. Now, what's the height going to be? Let's see what it says about B. Okay, it's moving with a constant acceleration of 3 meters per second for T seconds. Okay. So we can find this height. So... We know that the acceleration is 3, so we can just do this if you want. So, let's have a look. We know u is 0, we know v is, we don't know, that's v. a is 3, and t is t. Okay, so we can say that v equals u plus a t. So that means this, this height here is 3 times t. Okay, this is 3t. Okay, so this is 3t. All right, that's the height there. Okay, so we know that these two areas are equal to each other. So the area of this is the area of a trapezium, which is half of the height, the perpendicular the distance between the parallel sides, times the sum of the parallel sides, which is t plus t minus 3.5, the sum of the parallel sides. So half the distance between the parallel sides times the sum of the parallel sides. And that's going to be the same area as a half times the base times the height. So you're going to have 14 over 2, which is 7 times 2t minus 3.5 is equal to, you're going to have 3 over 2 times t squared. So we'll end up with a quadratic. So we're going to have here 14 times t minus, and you've got 3.5 times 7, which is 3.5 times 7, 20 something, 24.5 minus 24.5. is equal to 3 over 2 t squared. Multiply both sides by 2, 
you'll have 28 times t minus that's 49 equals 3t squared so you end up with a quadratic equation let me just continue over here so you get 3t squared let's bring everything to one side uh, minus 28t plus 49 equals 0. Okay, so to solve this equation, we have to use, could use factorizing, I guess, but let's just use um, a formula to find it. Okay, yeah, we could use the formula to solve this. Um, we could use factorizing by splitting the middle term, but again, a little shortcut for you. When you, you don't want to be uh, maybe thinking too much or getting you know, worried in the exam. You could deal with this quite simply. Um, if you're not sure how this will factorize and, you know, splitting the middle term, it's going to take some time, you're running out of time, whatever, you can do something which will help you and you won't lose any marks. Okay, so you go to menu. Oh, we're done here. Okay, you go to menu. You go to the part that says equation. This one is nine. Polynomial again. Degree two, which is quadratic and you just put in the values of the coefficient of the t squared which is 3 and press equals coefficient of the t which is minus 28 don't forget the sign minus 28 press equals and the and the constant which is plus 49 so 49 equals and then you press equals again it will tell you one of the solutions now what i would suggest you do is you leave a bit of space say, okay t equals 7 okay and then you press equals again and it gives you the other solution, which is 7 over 3. So t equals 7 over 3. 7 over 3. Okay. Now, what you can do is you can kind of work backwards. You can say, okay, that means that, that would have been t minus 7 equals 0. And that would have been 3t equals 7. Okay, before you did that, it would have been 3t equals 7. And this would have been... Uh, t minus 7 in one bracket. It's a lagging now. And this would have been, before that, it would have been 3t minus 7 equals 0. Okay, that's 3t minus 7 equals 0. So this will be, therefore, 3t minus 7. And that's how you can fake that you factorized it. Okay? You should know that you can factorize it by splitting the middle term or guessing checking. But this is a nice um, way to do it in an exam when you have a, a you know, problem. So t equals 7 or t equals 7 over 3. Now, it says find the value of t. So there's only one value of t. Now, what we can think about here is t is definitely more than 3.5 seconds. Okay, t is definitely more than 3.5 seconds. Okay, so it can't be 7 over 3 because 7 over 3 is less than 3.5 seconds. So t must be 7. t is equal to 7 seconds. And that's the answer to that part of the question. Okay, so t equals 7 seconds. Um, and we know that because we know that t must be more than 7.5. Okay, t has to be more than 7.5. All right. Uh, sorry, more than 3.5, not 7.5. Because it's at the, at the time when um, a is going at a constant speed. By the way, this is a. And this is B. You should really label them. Okay? So when A is going at constant speed, it's going to be where T is. So it must be more than 3.5. Okay. So we know that it can't be 7 over 3. Now, um, and part D says, find the distance of car B from the point Q when B overtakes A. Okay. So the point Q is like the beginning of the journey. All right, so basically, you've got to find the distance that these have, have moved. You can find that either... The, the area of this trapezium or the area of this triangle, the areas are the same. Um, triangles are generally easy to find the area of, so let's take the area of the triangle. Now we know the dimensions of the triangle, don't we? Okay, this is um, t and this is 3t, yeah, if we remember rightly. Yes, and we know what t is, t is 7. So this is 7 and this is 21. Okay, so the area because the distance is the area under that triangle, which is a half times 7 times 21. Okay, so you have a half times 7 times 21. 
Um, so you have half, 0 0.5 times 7, multiplied by 21. That gives you 73.5 meters. Okay, that's part D. And now part E. Um, come. Okay, so part E it tells us on a new diagram, sketch on the same axes an acceleration time graph for the motion of A for the interval and an acceleration time graph for the motion of B of the same interval. Okay, so we've got to find, basically do an acceleration time graph for A and B. Okay, so let me just do that properly. Okay, so we have acceleration against time. So we have acceleration. This is meters per second squared against time, which is in seconds. All right. Now, for um, remember the acceleration of a acceleration of a was 4 meters per second squared. The acceleration of B was 3 meters per second squared. For the first 3.5 seconds this was. And then it was constant acceleration. And then it was a constant speed, which is zero acceleration. So for A, you have 4 meters per second squared for 3.5 seconds. And then you have um, zero meters per second squared for the, uh, the next um, 3.5 seconds. This is seven seconds altogether we're considering. And um, for B, it's constant acceleration of three meters per second all the way through, three meters per second squared. So let's just show that. So you got, you're going to have three and four. Okay. So for A, it's going to go like, For A, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have that. For B, it's going to be all the way to 7. Okay, so this is 7 seconds. And this is 3.5 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to show this. Let me show this in a different color. Let me show this in a different color okay because then a is going to go down here so this is a I'll put that in a different color okay this is 3.5 Okay. So here we have A. This is A. And this is B. And this is A. Okay, between here and here. All right. So there we have a, a sketch of an acceleration time graph of the motion. A was going for constant acceleration of 4 meters per second for 3.5 seconds. B is going at a constant acceleration of 3 meters per second squared, sorry, 4 meters per second squared, 3 meters per second squared, all the way for all 7 seconds. Okay, and there we have it. And that's the end of that question. Thank you.